coming in quick and hot today with some breaking news on auto GPTs and the future of auto GPTs for engineers, for writers, for businesses in general. I'm your co-host, Kip Bodner, CMO at HubSpot. I'm joined by my co-host, Kieran Flanagan, the CMO at Zapier, and this is Marketing Against the Grain. Let's get into today's show. Kieran, we got some new news on the auto GPT front. We're seeing some innovation happening in auto GPT land. Can you first remind people what auto GPTs are and walk us through a little bit about what's happening? Right. Auto GPT, we covered it on the channel. People loved it. It was basically what they are is chaining together separate GPTs to actually achieve tasks. So I've, I set it up on my laptop. And when I set it up, I could actually give it a kind of broad based goal, like go create marketing campaign for me and then actually follow up with leads and sell them with outbound campaign or whatever it is. And it would actually stitch together that experience. It would actually create that experience and it would stitch it would actually pass off work to different GPTs. And so it chains together different GPTs, be able to complete entire tasks or entire jobs to be done from start to finish with little to no details. Now, some of them will actually come back and ask you clarifying questions, but like this ability really to take human out of the loops, right? It prompts itself, it writes its own prompts, passes the prompt onto another GPT, GPT does work, passes it on to another GPT, GPT does work. And so auto GPT was super interesting, very, very buggy. Um, a lot of hype didn't do a lot, but like we're seeing a new a new kind of versions of them coming out, which is much more interesting. All right, so TLDR, it's a bunch of robots working together to do stuff. A bunch for of you, robots just working together, which is, doing a bunch which of shit. is pretty sick. I want robots to do stuff for me all the time, and we've seen what was kind of like hype, kind of didn't do that much, start to manifest into some pretty interesting stuff right. that is now able to do. Right. Right. And so I saw this one here from Matt Schumer, and it's like pretty cool right this thing here you can see Ooh. he's got a prompt here to write a future uh, a, a whole novel where humans have integrated machines and something about magic and what it actually will do he cre he talks about the writing style and what this here will do will actually go create the um actual cover art so you can see it here creating the cover oh, art sweet. create all of the chapters and then actually write the book for you so that's where crazy, are we going man. with this? We are going with AI agents. The cover agents. art even is yeah, awesome. The cover, like, here's all the chapters. Here's all the content it's created. It's created custom content for that person. This is where we're going with media, which is you don't have to buy a kind of similar book to me. I have my own book personalized to what I want to read, right? I have my own movie personalized to what I want to watch. I have my own game personalized to what I want to play. And I know this is a very early example of that. But it's a pretty incredible example. It's one, it's an incredible example. And I think most people that are going to see this author, GPT author would say, oh, that's awesome. Like, we're just going to have more books that are written by robots. Cool. And that would be missing the point. Kieran, you are making the real point, which is like, when you can spec out a custom book, you can have a book that is only ever written and read by one, one person. person. Exactly. Right. It helps about Kieran, I'll test this out on you. We're, we're talking about you know, the last era of the internet was all about personalized and now we're moving to personal. Yes. Like you're having this one, one to one, one experience. segment of one experience and that's pretty freaking incredible. And even if you think about how we talk about the last hundred years, we've talked about, it's largely been the age of mass media, right? Like I went to a school that was like school of journalism and mass communication. You know, like how do you how do you communicate at massive scale? We're actually going to flip that on its head and say, "Hey, it's actually personal media now, right?" And you can have a viable business taking this idea and making millions of personalized options. And I think you and I are arguing that's actually not mass media. That is a way to deliver a ultra personalized media experience, personal media experience to a lot. Millions and millions of people. Yeah, you can imagine someone just having a subscription, being able to go into that subscription, oh, say, sure. hey, my kid this month, my my child this month wants to read Harry Potter novel, but the Harry Potter novel is based in Wizard of Oz and Wizard of Oz also includes like, uh, what's another fun, th what's another kid's thing that I can think of? What's the- Peppa the Pig. Pepper the pig, <laughs> yeah. Pepper the pig is there, and she's like the. the I'm trying to think of lots of British she's, she's, accents. She's, she's, and stuff, she's you know? the she's the wicked witch of the of the east, right? And actually, like, okay, like AI creates tailored book with all of the imagery and probably some like videos to bring it to life. 
customized for your for your child. And that that's the, an incredible direction that we're heading in. Actually, one of the funny examples that I saw here, not a funny, like pretty interesting example where someone was trying to use this open source product to write a sequel to their novel. So what he did was took this code oh, nice. and because of the tokens, the token limit could actually paste in his first book and then ask the AI to write a follow-up of that book and give it some guidelines of what it wanted to happen in the second version of that book. So like pretty, pretty incredible. Well, the, hold on, hold on. Before you finish this out, that's what's pretty brilliant about that is we are now in this like IP era where like, oh, cool. If somebody creates a story, would it be one of the Marvel stories, superhero stories, whatever that resonates? We just go and then spin off a bunch of sequels to that, right? right? AI is going to let us do that for anything. It's like, cool, you read this article that you liked? Well, I could turn that article into a book and you can exactly. go really deep yeah, on that yeah. if you want. Yeah. And that is freaking mind-blowing, right. man. Like, I don't know that people really grok the future we're about to live right. in. You like this thing, why don't I just create different versions of that thing for you, right? Like, But then, but then also, how do you ever learn anything new? Well, the, if you could have an I, okay. endless amount of shit that this like, is a stuff whole you like, other topic that how I, would you I, ever learn anything new? Challenge yourself. I, 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 I kind of worried about our society. A little I, bit. I did talk about this with you in a, in a lot. We can cover this in a future episode because I kind of mentioned this in a previous episode, which is I feel like this media direction puts everyone Could more fir- puts everyone more firmly in their comfort their zone. echo chamber. Yeah, echo chamber. That's it, sure. it actually allows you to go even further. Like social media allowed us to go even further into echo chamber because now we can find people who believe the things that we believe and we can just hang out with them all day. Media for one helps you to go into your echo chamber even more because now I can just spend all of my time consuming things that I truly believe. That's actually one of the problems with our society is like no one actually totally. thinks, no one, like you, you stay in your little lane and you're like, I believe my little lane and everyone else is like bad. And personal me- like media, the media being created for an individual exasperates that problem. The one that's getting a lot of traction, I want to cover two and like just talk about them real quick. Yeah, so GPT please. engineer is like the one that's getting a lot of attraction. So Lior, who we've covered before, we've referenced before, yeah, does a really good job him. summarizing all this stuff. This has 12,000 stars on GitHub already. I actually dove into the um, Hacker <laughs> News post where the creator of this was actually going through why they created it wanted to provide this kind of sandbox for developers to be able to create code and have an assistant to create code with. and went through like, people are iterating and trying to improve upon it. But the kind of interesting thing is like, let's just start this little um, little video. And so what's really interesting is you can, this is it making the snake game, right? And what it's, <laughs> you can see it's just given I some basic uh, inputs, right? Like he's talking yeah. through the, you know, basic requirements are creating that game and then runs it. And then GPT, GPT will, the GPT engineer will hand off to different GPTs to just go through and start to create all of this code. And will actually answer, it'll actually ask you clarifying questions to make sure it has the right, the right details. One of the things that I saw on the video, which is super interesting, or this is it actually building the snake game now. One of the things that I saw on the, that I've seen people do is I can actually go to chat GPT and I can ask it, what are the rules of the snake game? And how would I give that uh, set to an f- engineer to build it to me? Then I can take that and then I can just give that to a GPT engineer and GPT engineer will actually go ahead and start to create that game for you. So you don't even need to actually build the functional <laughs> spec. The you actual can, requirements. Yeah, yeah, you don't even need to build the requirements. You can actually just go to chat GPT, ask it for something, tell it, how would I actually give this to a developer to build? Then go to GPT engineer, which is this kind of series of GPTs that work together to complete something and actually just give it those functional requirements to complete that thing for you. You literally just have to have the idea. Yeah, you have to have the idea. It's crazy. Because again, here, ask clarifying questions, generates technical spec, writes all necessary codes, uh, easy to add your own reasoning steps and modify the experiment and then lets you finish a coding project in minutes. It's just getting, you know, it's, just another step up in terms of what these AI agents can do and the amount of work that they can do for us. So that is the one that has completely blown up. Very, very interesting. Well, um, yeah, K- K- Kieran, what I would just say is you have this belief that the costs of taking risk in an AI world are essentially zero. And this is a great, great example. example of All that. you need is the like, idea. You're like, hey, I have this idea about this experiment I want to run to grow my business or this little app I want to build to see if people will use and it will bring customers in for my business. You can build the most basic lightweight version of this 
without really any human time. And then put it out there, validate if people actually use or like it. It's pretty incredible. It, it's super incredible. I think the other thing you'll be able to do with this is just pass in a wireframe. You don't even need to pass in functional yes. specs. Pass in a wireframe, it will create something from the wireframe. We've already seen, we saw in our episode where we took in founders and they pitched us, we saw the winner of that was taking Figma design and building code from them. But again, yeah, yeah this, like what matters then when you actually have and uh, a, a structure like this that will actually build something from simplistic commands and actually not even just build it. Like the big thing here is that it doesn't just like take your idea and just go try to build it. It actually knows to ask you clarifying questions to get the information that it needs. And yeah. the thing that truly matters is still the idea, right? People with better ideas yes. are still going to win. The But I see this, I see this chain in together of GPTs like we started with AutoGPT, but AutoGPT was like, you could do anything with it or you could ask it anything. And it was like, not that successful. But what we're starting to see is like very specific versions of that that are more dialed in. So there's going to be less mistakes because they're dialed into a specific functional area. And it's like pretty cool, right? D drop your comments on YouTube around what you think this means for the future of media consumption and media. Uh, I think GPT author is a pretty mind blowing idea. Uh, I'm excited that we got to share this a little bit with you all today. We wanted to keep this episode super tight because we just wanted to bring you the latest and greatest in auto GPT because we think it's a really important evolving technology. We'll be back real soon with more episodes. Please subscribe to the channel. Uh, we'll see you real soon on Marketing Against the Grain. This data is wrong every freaking time. Have you heard of HubSpot? HubSpot is a CRM platform where everything is fully integrated. Whoa, I can see the client's whole history, calls, support tickets, emails, and... Here's a task from three days ago I totally missed. HubSpot. Grow better.